Hey, what up, guys? So welcome back to the channel. Hopefully it's a quick, easy, and painless video for both of us. Um, today we're going to be doing a little bit of control mapper via Simha. Um, I've started to collect a lot of wheels over time, and I think this would be a good thing to show you guys because it took me a little bit. Um, and this is going to be the Arduino-focused SimHub control mapper setup. So um, bear with me as I go through this with you guys, and hopefully this looks nice, clear, and concise to you all. So first and foremost, make sure you have an Arduino. Um, I have mine already plugged into a USB-C cable because that's what I got. Um, but a nice, simple Arduino, Arduino Pro Micro or Leonardo will work. Um, we'll get SimHub all pulled up here. Um, and it's not a hard process to do. Actually, it's quite easy. Um, but in order to do so, again, you just want to make sure that you set up the controller. So the first thing you're going to see when you go to SimHub is just open up Control Mapper. I've already added the wheel. So if you have a wheel, make sure it's already added to your SimHub. Um, once you have it added, uh, you're simply going to go to Control Mapper and you're going to see three different options. Obviously, I can disable it. I have VJoy and I have Bridge. VJoy isn't bad. I just have had issues with VJoy in the past. So to make my life easy, what I've decided to do is just get an Arduino, bridge it, and from everybody I've heard talk about it, using Arduino to bridge it makes it far more reliable and successful um, because you have a physical Arduino you're mapping it to, um, and it just works. So, so far it's been good to me, and I can easily swap out my wheels on games like AMS2, which we all know does not currently allow that. If you have a wheel connected, you have to leave it on, unless you connect multiple at the same time, just to make sure you can switch wheels. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Arduino. Connects to my system. It'll say connected. Now, typically when you set this up, it'll say disconnected. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through that process as if it's disconnected. So I'm going to click on flash update bridge firmware. We're going to see two communication links on here. Now, many times if you have one or two, you may have to disconnect something. So what we'll do is we'll leave my wheel connected because I want to show you how you can easily decipher. So we're going to go to device manager In device manager, I go to view devices by container. And then we're going to look on here for any Arduino pro micro that we have. Now I've already done it. So it's going to say SIM hub controller remapper bridge, but it's going to say com 32 for you. It'll likely say Arduino Leonardo or Arduino pro micro. You just expand it to see which communication link it's connected to. So we know it's COM32. We're gonna make sure it's highlighted there. It's gonna say single or triple. Again, you can have up to three of these connected. Um, I don't see why you would. 128 button input seems to be plenty divisive for anybody I can think of. But again, if you run more, you do have the option, but it does say this is the best compatibility across games. Gives you a little safety tip. I hit, I understand. We're gonna flash version 1.3 on COM32. And we're all done. So now it will say connect it for you. You'll see a whole bunch of buttons here when you set up for the first time. You will not see as many buttons on here because a couple of things you're going to have to do once you get that part done connecting the Arduino Pro, you're going to have to add any buttons you want to add. It's very simple. So on this list, all you're going to do is click on assign roles. Now you can export or import. So if you have and you want to know or you want mine, just let me know. I'll send it to you. No worries. But you're going to click on assign roles. Once you go to assign roles, you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can overwrite the ones that are already here. And again, we're on controller one because that's all we have. So controller one, we're going to say, you know what? I'm going to, for me, override gear seven. And I'm going to make this random. Just a random button for now. So with that being said, we've made that random and you would add any more you want down the list. So again, I have 55 separate inputs. Um, my funky switches are seven way. So that's 14 inputs. And I put them literally as right, funky, left, right, down, up, because in certain games, they may control different things. So for traction control, yes, I want something that says traction control, positive and negative. But my funky knobs, depending on what game I'm playing, may be mapped to something different. So in iRacing, it's my black box. Um, in another game, it's something else. So for me, I put those as right, funky, left, up, down, right, so forth, and whatever. 
So you can also map your axes, which is your clutch, throttle, brake, and handbrake. So if you have pedals, you can go ahead and type in the different uh, axes, uh, keyboard, and sim hub controls. So you have a litany of things you can assign and create in this edit roles. Once you're done, you're going to simply click OK. So now we've mapped all of these. And again, if you're mapping pedals and things like that, you can map them through here. Um, to me, I don't think personally, the axes is as beneficial outside of if you have clutches on your wheel and you want to map those so that you could use those in game. With that being said, if you have a wheel that has clutches and doesn't have clutches, then you may have a little bit of a conflict. Um, but Again, it'll still work perfectly fine. You'll just have to decide what you're going to use in game. But again, for wheels, I think this is tremendous for pedals and, uh, you know, different button boxes and things like that. You're likely going to run the same button box or the same pedals in multiple sims. This is really beneficial when you have multiple wheels. So once you've got that part set up, then you're going to come over here and you should see nothing here. The first time you go to set anything up, all you're going to do is click add new source controller. Now it's going to say, hey, there's an unmapped controller that you have plugged in. Let's go ahead and get that plugged in and get that connected. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit OK. Now at the bottom, it says, yep, that's connected because I've already added this device to SimHub. Now I'm doing this part. So all you're going to do is expand it and you get a bunch of options. I can export. I can import, I can rename, I can delete, or I can map controller. Now I deleted this wheel for the sake of this video, so I do need to add it back. So what we're gonna do is click on map controller. Now it's very, 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 very simple. All those things you created initially on your long list of different inputs or buttons you're gonna use, all you're gonna do is now click on it. I'm gonna say, hey, click on something to assign it. I click shift down, I click shift up. And you will do this for every single button across the way. So for instance, like my brake balance is, this is going to be negative. This is going to be positive and so forth. I would hit okay. Now that I've mapped those here in those respective uh, buttons in SimHub, the next step is to pull up your actual Sim from here because what you'll have to do is you're going to have to map those buttons in the sim. The way you do that is with your trusty cell phone. So let's get out the cell phone, which is you already see on screen. I'm going to load up iRacing because that's simple to load up and I'll get it started. All right. So now that we've got my sim loaded and iRacing, I'm going to go ahead and click on controls. Now, granted, again, I've already done this for my game, but what you're going to have to do is now map all of those buttons that you assigned, regardless of what they are, you're gonna have to map them into the sim you're playing. Now, for example, I'm gonna go to control. All these things have been mapped using SimHub. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up SimHub and what you'll do is when you go to SimHub, all you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says open the mapping open the mapping assistant on my phone. Sorry about that tongue tie. Once you click on it, you either into this or you scan it. If you have a cell phone, a modern cell phone, just simply scan it. It'll pull up on your phone exactly what you see on my screen. Now, all you're going to do is you're going to find and you'll see all of those things you assigned here are here. All you're going to do is go into the SIM, find what you want to assign, and then from there, Go ahead and click on the button. So, for example, brake bias. I need to map brake bias. So I'm going to go on the list. I see brake balance front and brake balance rear. So it says to increase the value. I'm going to hit simulate. Done. I'm going to hit simulate. Done. Finished. Pro. But you do this for every single wheel. I've taken the liberty of mapping my Kodai here while you guys weren't looking and you can always test them by simply once you've mapped it if i click on something i should see a red dot pop up of what i clicked on so i can see and i'll have to scroll up all the buttons that i mapped i didn't map that button so apparently um, but you'll be able to simulate to make sure you've mapped all of your buttons and where you want them to go so that's a brief easy setup 
that I think everybody should do if you have more than one wheel. And if you have the capability of running SimHub and you're on PC, totally set it up. So hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully this helps answer any questions you may have. If you have any for me, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being the best part of Gray's Dynamics. Thumbs up, notifications on, subscribe to the channel. Members, thank you for being a great part of me and I appreciate it. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Peace.